A hollow tube of length L, initially open at both ends, is submerged in a large graduated cylinder filled with water. The tube is slowly raised out of the water and the tuning fork, vibrating with frequency F, is held a distance from the top of the tube. Assume the speed of sound of wave propagation in the column to be that of air, given as the constant V air, and determine the height H of the tube above the water when the air column resonates for the first time. Express your answer in terms of F and V air. First, a reminder that this is a problem about the creation of standing waves in a apparatus that is capable of supporting standing waves. I remind you that there are three main types of apparatus that we can see at this level of physics. There's the string, which is fixed at two ends. You can get a standing wave on that through the propagation of energy through the string. There is the open air column, where the air inside a cylinder, open at both ends, is disturbed at just the right frequencies to form standing waves of air molecule displacement. And there is the closed air column, specifically the one that's closed at one side. There isn't one that's closed at both sides. In terms of the small height of the air cylinder that is allowed to remain above the water, we have a closed air column where the water interface is the closed end. Let's consider this to be our model of choice and analyze it. This is a representation of the displacement of air molecules inside a closed air column when the air molecules are vibrating at a fundamental frequency for the column. That is your first harmonic. Harmonic 1 gets one node, and that node for a closed air column is always at the closed end. That leaves an antinode at the other end, and remember that the open end of a closed air column must always be an antinode. So this is the pattern we see for the air displacement in the first harmonic, but does that look like a complete standing wave to you? Do you see a complete sine or cosine, one of those things that we usually use to model standing waves or sound waves? No, you do not. But if I complete the picture like so, we can construct the full wave and extrapolate that what we were looking at was one-fourth of the entire wave, the whole. You see, an entire wavelength of the desired standing wave is now present. We may call it lambda. And one can tell that lambda is equal to four times the length of my closed air column, in this case, h for the height. Therefore, we can determine that the height desired by dividing both sides by four is this lambda over four. Now, lambda is not an acceptable answer. Okay, we have not been given the wavelength associated with this frequency, but we can find it easily enough by stating the wave equation. V equals lambda F, velocity of wave propagation equals wavelength times frequency, where we know that our wave propagation speed is equal to V air, the one they described, a constant, probably 343 meters per second or something like that. We may divide both sides by F, again, itself a given quantity, to find that V air over F is equal to the wavelength. And that is an acceptable substitution for the lambda over here. The desired height becomes V air over F over 4, which is one way of expressing it, or perhaps preferably 1 fourth times the ratio of the air to the frequency. And there is the required height for the first time that this open tube will resonate. 
at the frequency that is fixed by the fork. The main takeaway from this problem should be how easy it is to generate the relationship between the wavelength of a standing wave and the length of your closed tube, or the height of it, as it may be in the context of this problem. Suppose we were interested in the next length, or the next height, a longer one, at which this tube would resonate. Instead of having one node, that standing wave would have two trapped within the tube. If there are two such nodes, there is only one shape that the standing wave can take, given that the closed end of the tube needs to be a node and the open end needs to be an antinode, and that shape looks like this. It's not too much of a stretch to surmise that we are looking at three quarters of a full standing wave, a full sine or cosine, take your pick. You see, that's what your full wave should look like, and this now is what the lambda, fixed by the frequency of this tuning fork and the speed of sound in air, as per the context of this problem, is going to be. Now it's clear that lambda is four-thirds of the height of the tube, and then you can conclude that the height must be equal to three-fourths of lambda you can tell that that's going to be a bigger result than what we got before, before it was one-fourth of lambda. In terms of the solution we got, our second height, let's refer to it as h prime, is three-quarters of the ratio of the velocity of air to the frequency. And so you will find that each successive height changes this numerator. It is an odd number starting at 1.